Katrina and Heather know what it means to be unstoppable. From humble beginnings, they followed these core principles to unimaginable success. The problem at hand? Medical scrubs. They're baggy and they fit horribly. They even advertise your size in big, bold letters for all the world to see. The duo didn't wait for the silver platter. They didn't wait for venture capital or a perfect game plan or feasibility studies. Their new business, a company called Figs, was born. Figs scrubs were a total departure from the norm. Trina and Heather, they kept on keeping on. The result, less than six years after selling prototypes from the trunk of their car, Trina and Heather led the company through an IPO on the New York Stock Exchange. And at the end of opening day, the company was valued at $6.8 billion. Life knocks us all down at one point or another. Those setbacks are just to test our resolve. But now, you have a choice. Will you let those challenges define you? Or now that you have all the tools you need, will you instead decide to become unstoppable? Thank you. Hey everybody, welcome back to The Hunt. I'm your host, Trish, and so excited for this next guest to introduce you to. His name is Wes Horbatak. He is the founder and CEO of Drift Line. It is um, a new wetsuit for board shorts, right? So we're gonna dive into all kinds of stuff with Wes. He is here in studio with us in Southern California. So welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Yes, I'm so excited. We've, um, we've had to reschedule a couple of times, so thanks for your flexibility. No it's problem. Sign of the times. Anything for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, I am so excited about this for a couple of reasons. We actually met about a year ago and we were um, just, we just happened to, you know, it was nothing planned, right? And, um, and we started talking about your business and now you're, you're here, you've got your, these are not prototypes people, these are actually ready to be sold and you've actually sold out, right? I know, yeah. On a couple of things anyway? Yeah. Okay, so let's start. I mean, okay, so just tell the audience, so yeah. Driftline. Driftline, so we make what's called Drifty. So our company's Driftline, our product is called Drifties, and we have patent pending, very close to be fully patented, uh, wetsuit line board shorts. Okay. So they look like a normal pair of board shorts, yep. but the funny thing is they have a wetsuit liner fully stitched in 360 degrees. So the functionality of a wetsuit keeps you warm, comfortable, and chafe free, but also looks like a normal pair of board shorts. Right, because I have two boys and I remember always buying them suits and having to cut out, yep. right, because it was so uncomfortable. Yeah. So I'm fascinated and we talk about this on the show a lot in terms of ideas and you're at point A with yeah. that first idea and then how in the world do you get to this and then being sold out? So did this come from just a, you were filling a gap based yeah, on? Yeah, it's, it's funny, I mean, most entrepreneurial entrepreneurs can tell you, and especially good products, like you have to fill a void. Yeah. And you, like mine was built out of necessity. I'm a, you can't really tell because I'm surfer. sitting. <laughs> I'm a surfer, but I'm tall and lanky and I hate putting on wetsuits. Okay. It's just really uncomfortable. And it was that time of year where it was too warm for a wetsuit, but too cold for board shorts. And I was literally standing on the edge of the ocean looking out about to go surfing and I'm like, there has to be a better way. The water is just a little too cold for me. And so literally light bulb moment, went home, cut up a pair of uh, an old wetsuit, stitched it into some board shorts and like the idea was made. Really? Yeah. I mean, literally went home. Yeah, it was like, it, it was a little bit, you know, a couple weeks there, yeah, but yeah, then yeah. was the process of, okay, now I have this idea. I 
come from finance accounting world, okay. what do I do now? Like I have no experience in fashion, clothing, et cetera. So right. I mean, just walk us through this because obviously, and you know, if we watch the news, I mean, we hear every day, like supply chain issues, supply chain issues, yeah. just, just the times that we're in right now are just so adverse in so many yeah. ways. But the other thing we like to talk about on the show are just um, inspired and encouraging stories. And again, you are a model of that just, you know, everything that we've been going through between COVID, the war, yep. inflation, um, you just didn't let any of that stand in your way. No. And you just started just one foot in front of the other. Like walk us through how, how, to, how to do that. How, how does that happen? Yeah, so we started this idea a couple of years ago. It's like actually pre-COVID. Okay. Um, takes a little bit to get everything moving. And what we did is I worked with a actual technical designer to help me out. Okay. We went through 15 manufacturers. And you just go on, Fiverr and find that person? No, like, I actually, <laughs> like you, you start building a network, yeah, right? Yeah. And friend to friend to friend, yep. and all of a sudden, like the networking I've done over the years after business school, like absolutely. And all of a sudden, people start appearing. Yeah, and yeah. you just put yourself out there, people will, in a positive way, people will respond. Yeah. So I finally found someone who could help me out, local San Diego, and he was able to work with us, already had a whole experience and a whole career in technical design. So he gave me you know, a little bit of expertise, commissioned him a little bit, and then we went through 15 manufacturers before one said yes. So it was just like total grinding. Now are you hands-on in that process? Oh, are yeah. you visiting the manufacturers, checking uh, out their well, quality, their reliability? So we couldn't actually travel at that point. Oh. It was actually pre-COVID, but I work a full-time other job, so that was kind of hindering that a little bit, mm -hmm. but the one- This is what's called the hustle, people. <laughs> yeah, the grind, it's yeah. very real. <laughs> exactly. Um, but one actual manufacturer was in LA for a fashion event, and he, they were like, can you get to LA in an hour? I was like, oh I'm gonna try, and uh, met him in a uh, hotel lobby and pitched him the idea, and he's like, I'm in. Wes, oh my God. Yep. All right, just so cool. Yeah. All right, all right, so what happened after that? Okay, so then we went through the process of manufacturing. And most people, if you don't know, if you're a shopper, you're like, oh, it's just on the shelves. But it takes like six to eight months of lead time for even it to leave a manufacturer to get on the shelf. And before that, like I'm planning a year ahead of time, like I'm already right now planning like summer next year stuff. So it's, it's crazy. So we had about a year and a half of planning everything. We launched in 2019 after okay. having a year and a half of like product enhancements, testing out nine different samples, and so we had six months of runway of being live before mm -hmm. COVID hit. And then COVID hit, and one of my friends locally here was like, you just gotta own your backyard and people will respond. So we dove headfirst into community, and our product is so built you, for So in other words, you started local. Started local. Before even thinking about, you know, what's, what are people doing on the East Coast yep. or anywhere else in the world. Yep. You're like, okay, we're gonna start local and say, okay, so what did you do? So we like went to every surf event, we posted up at every beach, just like literally, you know, I work for a, a larger financial company right now, mm -hmm. but I had to really temper my expectations and just go boots on the ground. Yeah. Uh, started really just getting into this into the right hands and we just constantly kept selling out these small batches. And our, my vision was to scale and be flexible. So it would be growing adjust, growing and adjust and start understanding who our demographics were. And finally, now we're on our fifth run and uh, just keeps getting crazier. That's incredible. So you had the, the nine or so prototypes. Did you actually wear them and oh, yeah. test them out? In the, and did you gather all your friends and say, okay, yep. let, give me some feedback, almost like focus groups to say Absolutely. what works, what doesn't work? All different sizes. And I even brought in like people who weren't friends so they could give me real advice. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's objective. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was cool because like I under, started understanding the fashion world and not everyone has the same body type, right? Right. So how it fits differently on different yeah. people and what could be tweaked here and there. And a lot of people don't understand the technical aspect behind clothing. So it's like everything is centimeters, millimeters, just to make sure that it fits and hugs the body correctly, especially with a finicky pro uh, material like neoprene. Yeah, and does it, um, so first of all, where do you manufacture? Uh, right now, Vietnam and Taiwan. Okay. And we're all, that was another important, important thing for me, was all above ground, yeah. all like green manufacturing. I was gonna ask you, like in your process of decision making, where you're like, okay, it's gotta make sure, it's gotta be above board, you yep. gotta make sure the manufacturers are. I've read so many 
you know, bad case studies. Yeah, exactly. So I wanted to make yeah. sure, so we're actually at it, like some pretty reputable uh, factories. Yeah, because I imagine like getting the actual material, the functionality, mm -hmm. the aesthetics, right? Um, you know, everything about it, the sustainability or whatever, you know, is, I mean, there's all these A lot decisions, of boxes to check, yeah. You know, to make, to say, okay, yeah, does, does that manufacturer check that box? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, will you have the opportunity to go and visit the manufacturing? We can't yet. They're still on, like, lockdown, okay. but the goal is this upcoming year to do so. But they yeah. are incredibly valuable working with us. And this is the cool thing about fashion world is there's actually a hidden language, right? We talk in tech packs and specific lingo mm -hmm. that allows them and allows anyone in the world to understand what we're saying about our product mm -hmm. because they're in a different country, speak a different language that if we show them, okay, we need this technical adjustment, we just kind of phrase it in a specific way that allows them to understand and then they execute. And it's just universal. Yep. I mean, people just get it. Yep. Unbelievable. Okay, so real, we're gonna be back in a minute with cool. you, but we're gonna take a quick break. Um, where can people find these? You can find them on our website at driftline.co.co and uh, anywhere else on social media. All right, fantastic. Okay, stay with us. We'll be back in a minute. I'm Trish. You're watching The Hunt.